Thank you. First of all, I want to thank you as always for your time and attention to this very important matter. Now, the case that you're going to hear today is the appeal of the termination of Richard Gardner, who was a longtime employee with the Division of Beach Services, which is commonly, I think, referred to as the Beach Patrol. He was a law enforcement officer who uh, worked there for a number of years. He, uh, you will not hear any evidence that he was a bad employee. He had good evaluations. He worked very hard. There's no dispute. That is undisputed. What you will hear, though, is evidence that as he progressed through the organization, he reached a level of authority in the organization. In 2009, he was the captain in charge of investigations. That position answers directly to the chief, and this, uh, this, who was Kevin Sweat, um, and is a position of high authority and responsibility. In February of 2009, um, if any of you have read the newspaper in the last several years starting then, you probably have seen a lot of uh, media coverage of the Volusia County Beach Patrol. Uh, it began in February 2009 with allegations from an employee that the Beach Department fostered a culture of sexual abuse and depravity. It continued through a federal lawsuit um, and brought a lot of attention on the Beach Patrol. Uh, Mr. Gardner was very aware of that uh, attention that was brought onto that organization. First, he was in a level of authority in the organization, uh, answering directly to the chief. He is basically the third in command. Um, he, um, along with the entire department, received additional training from the county's personnel department and the county legal department about sexual harassment in the workplace and about ethics in your relationships and about professionalism. There was a heightened sense of scrutiny of that department that began in February of 2009. What's significant about that date of February of 2009 that it was, the evidence will show you and it's undisputed that at that time Mr. Gardner began an affair with a line level law enforcement officer. You're going to hear testimony that uh, about a, the law enforcement officers at the Beach Patrol, and I tell you this only so you understand when you hear it, are called senior lifeguards. They're not called, they're called officer, but they're referred to as senior lifeguards. So if you hear a se uh, the terminology senior lifeguard, that refers to a sworn law enforcement officer at the line level. Um, he began an affair with a young lady who had been a lifeguard uh, there since 2002 and had actually become a sworn law enforcement officer and uh, in fact, in February 2009, she was on probation, and she was a trainee. Um, and uh, there's no dispute that it was a mutual decision. Um, there was no uh, force used by Captain Gardner. There's no allegations of any of that. It was a, a, um, it was a consensual affair that did not occur at work in terms of any sexual activity or anything like that. There's no dispute as to that. The significance of this is that because of his level in the organization, he was the captain in charge of investigations. He was, beginning in, I believe, September of 2010, at times the acting deputy chief. And that position is second in command, right under Chief Sweat. And when Mr. Gardner was the acting deputy chief, he was in charge of the entire organization. That would occur on weekends if the deputy chief was off or on days that the other deputy chief was off. So his authority in the organization was at a very high level. And the significance of that is that we expect the judgment of people that we put in those positions to be above reproach when it comes to things like relationship with subordinate officers. You're going to hear testimony that um, he did not directly supervise uh, Officer Gittner. And the truth of that is that she was never permanently assigned to him on a day-to-day -day basis. She worked a zone in Dunlawton for a period of time and then was eventually transferred to the Daytona zone, which happened to be where Mr. Gardner worked at. This is the last part of his career. He worked in the Daytona zone. So what the records will show you, and what the evidence will show you, is that while she may not have been assigned to him on any permanent basis, she worked for him. First of all, he was a superior officer and she was a subordinate. And as any of you know, in law enforcement, if a, if a superior officer gives you an order, unless it's unlawful, you're required to obey it, whether you work for that superior officer or not, or you're insubordinate and subject to discipline. So to say that she did not work for him and therefore it was okay for them to have an affair just uh, belies the facts. There were times that she was assigned to work investigations periodically. And you will hear testimony from Captain Tammy Maris, who supervised Ms. Gittner, that Captain Gardner would actually call Captain Maris and say, 
can you send her up to work on an investigation with me? And that happened frequently. It happened frequently enough that Officer Captain Maris made a notation in Officer Gittner's evaluation that she worked about investigations and she was very good at it by all accounts. Um, one could see why he would want her to assist him because she was very good at it and very thorough. The problem was at the time this is all going on, they were engaged in an affair. And he was her superior when she was working on investigations. They worked outside details together, which is, for example, the parking garage. They hired the law enforcement officers from the beach to work at night, and, and uh, some of the restaurants do. When someone works in outside detail, um, the superior officer is going to be the captain in that case. So on cases when they worked outside details together, he clearly was her supervisor, direct supervisor. Um, when she worked outside details, the uh, supervisor of the outside details was by policy was that for a period of time was the deputy chief. So when he was the acting deputy chief, he would have been her supervisor when she worked in outside detail, even if he wasn't there. And any time he was an acting deputy chief, he had authority over all of the employees. So it's the county's position that while she may not have ever been permanently assigned to work for him, he clearly was her superior and at times her supervisor. Um, and that's what the records will show you. This, um, relationship went on for about two and a half years and uh, by all accounts it was on and off it wasn't constant but it was an on and off kind of thing you're going to hear testimony from uh, chief sweat and from other witnesses that uh, captain gardner and miss gittner spent a lot of time together at work they would train together in the morning they would do drill together they would run together they would work out together and although there wasn't anything you know any inappropriate touching that anyone reported it was obvious to many people, and you'll hear from some of them, that there was something going on between Captain Gardner and Officer Gittner. Now, the problem with that is, for one thing, he's in a position of authority 